Hello everyone, I am Tanvi Kaur and I welcome you to this series called RBI 247. In this very series, we pick up some important financial topics and we try to discuss them with the help of different questions. So before moving on to question number one, for all those who are watching this session for the very first time, you can subscribe to our channel and press this bell icon for all latest updates and notifications. You can also join our telegram group. In this very group, we share some free quizzes as well as the updates for all our latest videos. So without wasting any time, let's move on to question number one. The question says that the group of seven recently reached a landmark deal to close cross-border tax loopholes used by some of the world's biggest companies. Which of the following is not a part of the tax deal proposal made? So G7 nations have made a deal with respect to taxation and this question is related to that. So for, let's first discuss about that deal and then we'll move back to the question. So this is about the G7 tax deal. What is G7? It's a group of seven countries. Okay, seven advanced economies are part of this group, which often come up together, have discussions with respect to different policies, with respect to international or global governance, with respect to international, uh, uh, international conflict handling and all such issues. So these countries meet up together often to have such discussions and it includes some advanced nations like Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, UK and US. So these seven nations have agreed upon a minimum amount of corporate tax which should be imposed on different multinational companies. So the group of seven has reached a deal to close the cross-border tax loopholes often used by some of the biggest companies. So the proposal has been made and the proposal comprises of first imposing a 15% of global minimum corporate tax. So I took one of the sessions where I told you that US is vouching for a global minimum tax. So that amount has now been reduced and 15% has been decided as of now to be the minimum global corporate tax which these seven nations are going to follow. Other than that, it's not just to impose a 15% tax, but they have also come up with another proposal which says that these big corporate firms earn profits in different nations. So there are some of the profits should also be taxed in those nations where they are actually selling their products and earning those profits rather than where they are showing those profits. So the countries where big firms operate would get the right to tax at least 20% of the profits which exceed the 10% margin which would apply to largest and most profitable multinational companies. So what many companies do, they pay tax in countries where the tax rates are low. So now they under this deal, they will have to pay more tax in countries where they are selling their products or providing their services rather than where they end up declaring the profits. So one of the major problems which arise is the tax evasion. The problem of tax evasion. So this deal is likely to help in resolving that problem of tax evasion. What do the companies do? Different multinational companies, companies operating on a large scale like Amazon is there, Google is there, Facebook is there, Nike is there. What all, What do the, such companies do? Companies like Amazon, Facebook, Nike, etc. What they do, they, uh, sh uh, they basically set up some of their subsidiary or some of their units in such countries where either the taxes are really very low or the taxes are almost nil. So there are different tax havens, the offshore nations where the tax rates are quite low, like we have Mauritius, we have different Virgin Islands, Caribbean Islands. So they offer very low tax rates or almost nil tax rates. So these companies set their unit in those nations and they show that they are earning their profits over there. So when they are earning their profits over there, they will have to pay taxes according to that country's tax regime and there the taxes are low. So these companies are able to evade the taxes. Now what this deal says, this deal says that whatever uh, be the profits earned in whichever nation such companies which belong to these nations are earning profits, 15% of tax they will have to pay. So suppose a company of say US is operating and it has such set up such a, a unit in one of the low tax jurisdictions and there they are paying say suppose 
only 5% of the tax then the remaining tax they will have to pay to us they can't evade the minimum 15% tax payment so agar koi bhi company hai jo kisi aur country mein operate kar rahi hai koi bhi us ki company hai koi bhi japan ki company hai वो कहीं और ऑपरेट कर रही है जहां वो 15 परसेंट से लेस का टैक्स दे रही है तो उसको अपनी होम कंट्री में 15 जितना भी डिफरेंस है उतना टैक्स देना ही पड़ेगा मतलब वो कंपनी 15 परसेंट टैक्स तो देगी ही देगी इतने टैक्स देने से वो नहीं बच सकती दिस इज द प्रपोजल अंडर दिस वेरी डील देन वॉट हैपन्स कंपनी शो द प्रॉफिट इन बोज नेशन वे द टैक्सेज आर लो सो नाउ द प्रपोजल एज सेड दैट सपोज दे आर a uh, company which belongs to us but they are operating say through mauritius where they have to pay less tax and they are earning profits majorly by selling their products to say india to say china then they will have to pay some percentage of tax in china or in india so this is the new proposal which has been proposed then uh, having a common minimum global tax can also bring in the uniformity when it comes to taxes so the major problem of tax evasion can be solved through this deal second advantage is that the countries were losing a lot of tax revenue because these companies evaded the tax by shifting to other low tax jurisdictions so now these countries will be able to earn more tax revenue because the companies can't ex- escape the 15% minimum tax moving ahead when could the common tax agreement come into effect so these g7 nations have already agreed um, uh, uh, with respect to this minimum tax but now this proposal will further be brought forward to the group of 20 nations so g20 countries ko abhi proposal forward kiya jayega they are going to have their meeting soon so let's see how they react to the proposal whether they accept the proposal or not then we uh, with if we talk about implementation the implementation is not that very easy still a lot of uh, things lot of exact or th- um, terms and conditions are yet to be agreed upon key details will be deliberated more nations will have to sign so more deliberations will happen more discussions will happen and uh, for this agreement to be adopted by a, a more number of countries will take a lot of time so full implementation of this very deal can take a lot of years moreover there are likely uh, there are problems are likely to arise especially from the low tax jurisdictions jo low tax jurisdiction wali countries hain jahan pe taxes bahut low hai wo to oppose karengi kyunki wo low taxes ki wajah se bahut companies apne yahan attract karti thi अब उन्हें उन कंपनीज को जब 15 परसेंट टैक्स देना ही पड़ेगा तो वो लो टैक्स जुरिस्टिक्शन में क्यों जाएंगे राइट सो वेन द कंपनीज हैव टू पे मिनिमम टैक्स देन वाई विल दे प्रेफर गोइंग टू सच लो टैक्स जुरिस्टिक्शन बिकॉज ऑफ विच दीज लो टैक्स नेशन विल ऑब्वियसली बी अगेंस्ट दिस वेरी डील नाउ टॉकिंग अबाउट द पॉसिबल इम्पैक्ट वेन इट कम्स टू इंडिया नाउ इट सीम्स दैट इंडिया कैन बेनिफिट फ्रॉम दिस वेरी डील इफ इंडिया एक्सेप्ट दैट one is that india already has a global corporate tax which is above 15% around 25% and 17% uh, after including the surcharges is the tax rate in 2019 the corporate taxes were reduced but still they were more, they are more than 15% so the companies already know the corporate tax rate in india and they are still coming to india even when this 15% minimum tax will be imposed it will not affect india the companies will continue to come to india because india mein utna tax already hi tha to pehle companies aa rahi thi to ab bhi aati rahengi ye 15% india ko negatively impact nahi karega the tax experts are of the view that it is it will benefit india as the domestic tax rate is already above the threshold so country will continue to attract investment secondly india is expected to benefit as it's a big market for large tech companies so we attract a lot of technology uh, india is basically a big market for tech companies so companies are more attracted to india india's effective tax rate tax rate is above this global minimum so it is not going to impact the businesses in india now if i talk about the global minimum tax rate impacting india then india already attracts a lot of foreign investment recently lot of fpi india uh, lot of fpi inflows india 
had so why is india attracting a lot of investment it is because of the large market in india good quality of labor in india which is also available at cheap rates at good rates then india is a good location with respect to exports and the private sector is also doing very well in india so these are few reasons why companies are attracted towards india so this 15% tax is not going to impact those companies to india which come basically for getting the benefits of good quality labor or of some other competitive reasons so despite of all this although these are some positive impacts we can have negative uh, things as well we can have the downside as well like if you are agreeing to 15% global tax then you are giving away your sovereign right so whenever the situations are not doing well economy is not doing well and you want to make use of your tax policy and reduce the corporate tax rates then the things will uh, then the problems might arise okay so you won't be able to use your tax policy according to your will you will have to charge a minimum 15% tax if you agree to this so lot of discussions are going on lot of deliberations are there we cannot say that what can be the exact impact as of now okay let more discussions come up let different countries have different view points on this and then we can finally say whether it is a good solution to come up with or not so these were few highlights about this very deep if i move back to the question it talked about the which of the following is not a part of this deal second and third are a part of this deal i have just discussed but not the first one because 15% is the rate agreed okay so answer is option a moving on to question number 2 this is with respect to one of the notifications on the rbi's website so the question says that the rbi's master directions on certificate of deposits 2021 permit which of the following to issue these certificate of deposits so let's first view these master direction uh, first of all we need to be clear about the concept of certificate of deposit what do we mean by a certificate of deposit it is a money market instrument and money market is the market where short term lending is done short term lending and borrowing is done so it's a short term instrument only just like we make an fd in a bank okay we deposit some money in a bank and we get that money back with some interest after some time same way the certificate of deposit operates with a slight difference so if we deposit some money in the bank and bank agrees to pay back that money with some interest the instrument which they issue us is a certificate of deposit but the difference is that that certificate is negotiable that is we can transfer it or we can trade that instrument so certificate of deposit is a negotiable unsecured money market instrument which is issued by the bank as a use usance promissory note as a usance promissory note means it is issued for some time period after which we we will be repay paid that amount along with some interest and the maturity time should not exceed 1 year so 1 year ke andar andar jab hum kuch deposit karte hain bank mein jo hame return mil jayega with some interest or wo instrument tab tak hum kisi aur ko transfer kar sakte hain sell kar sakte hain such a instrument is a called a certificate of deposit now talking about these directions as per these directions who can issue these certificate of deposit i have already told you it's a deposit with a bank so obviously the banks will have the power to issue it so which kind of banks can make a issue of certificate of deposit so scheduled commercial banks regional rural banks and small finance banks these three types of banks can issue the certificate of deposits certificate of deposits that is cds can also be issued by some all india financial institutions but they will not be guided under this market this a very uh, master direction okay this ma- the the, uh, the cds which are issued by all india financial institutions will be guided under separate directions which are provided in a circular which states resource raise raising norms for your financial institution so jo all india financial institution cds issue karti hai wo dusre master direction ke under governed hoga is master direction ke under sirf ye teen type of bank issue kar sakte hain wo govern hote hain talking about who can invest in these cds who can make a deposit under this all persons who are resident in india can issue them moving ahead with some more general guidelines about these so these cds should be issued only in a dematerialized electronic form and they should be held with the depository and that depository should be registered with sebi so ye dematerialized form mein hi issue honge talking about their denomination kitne amount ke ye issue ho sakte hain 
So the denomination is a minimum of 5 lakh and then in multiples of 5 lakh thereafter. So minimum 5 lakh is the amount for a issue of CD. Then talking about their time duration. So they should not be for a time period less than 7 days and not exceed 1 year. 7 days is zyada, 1 year se kam in ka time duration hai. They can be issued at discount and at any value which reduces between discount to your face value. Talking about the coupon rate, the interest which you will earn, that can be fixed or that can be floating as well. Then talking about their dealings with respect to the secondary market. So they can be traded on over-the-counter markets. They can also be traded on the electronic trading platforms. But when it comes to trading them on a stock exchange, for that you need an approval from RBI. Otherwise, they can easily be traded on over-the-counter markets. And the settlement period is T plus 0. Uh, T plus 0 to T plus 1. Talking about the fact that can you get loans against these CDs, the banks are not allowed to give loans against the certificate of deposit. But that there can be an exception to this when you are getting special permit from RBI's end. Then talking about the buyback, the issuing banks can also buy back these CDs. So if a bank is taking a deposit in the form of CD and that bank has enough liquidity, doesn't need uh, more of the funding, it can also buy back these CDs. So for that, they need to make an offer to the investor and investor will accept or reject that offer. And at least seven days time period should be there after which you can buy back. So these are some general guidelines with respect to this circular. So if I move back to the question, which of the following can issue CDs? First, second and third can issue CDs. So answer is option B. Alright, moving on to next question. Fill in the blanks. The dash rate is the percentage of labor force that is unemployed. And the dash rate is a measure of proportion of countries working age population that is actively engaged in labor market. So this question I have put up because we have seen a rise in the unemployment levels because of the pandemic which is there. Okay, because of COVID, a lot many people are losing on their jobs. They are migrating and they are unable to find the jobs. So what rates are used to assess the unemployment? The answer to this question is option C. The unemployment rate is the rate uh, unemployment rate is the percentage of labor force that is unemployed and the labor force participation rate is a measure of proportion of countries working age population engaged in labor market. So let us understand a bit about these rates. So we have seen a case of rising unemployment in India. Joblessness has soared in India. Why? Because of the pandemic and urban India is hitting a high record. People are migrating from urban uh, urban. India to rural India. So urban area is losing on the employment. People are going away. They are not getting work or they are losing their jobs because of the pandemic. The labor force participation rate has also fallen and it signals that there's a need to revive the economic activities. So let us see what is this unemployment rate and what is this labor force participation rate. So if I talk about the unemployment rate, a country's economic performance can be assessed on the basis of number of indicators and one such indicator is the unemployment rate. So if there are people who are willing to work, who can work, who have the ability to work but they are not able to find a job, that is a signal of unemployment in the economy. Okay, When adults who are willing to work, able to work, can't, can't find a job. The unemployment rate, if we have to define it, it's obviously the amount of labor force which is not getting work, which is unemployed. So it's the percentage of labor force that is unemployed. So the, uh, the formula is how many people are unemployed divided by what's the total labor force who can actually work, who are willing to work in 200 when it comes to percentage terms. Now talking about the unemployment rate in India, these regional lockdowns which have been imposed have led to the even more spread of COVID and we have seen the effects after effects of that on the unemployment level. If I talk about March, the, the rate was 6.5%. Then in April it increased to 79 and in May to 119 
so this is the unemployment rate you can see that because of the covid the unemployment rates are rising and this is with respect this is on the daily basis like it, uh, in the month of may it was 11.9 percent you can see 31st may it was 11.9 until 7 june it increased to 12.9 and it is increasing further so this is why uh, because of the this shows that because of the pandemic the unemployment rates have risen in india now talking about the labor force participation rate what does it tell it tells how many labor are actually participating in the work they have to do so it's a measure of proportion of country's working age population engaged in labor market kitne log hain jo kaam kar sakte hain kaam karne wale category mein aate hain aur un kaam karne wali category mein aane wale logon mein se kitne log hain jo actually as a labor work kar rahe hain that rate is the labor force participation rate see unemployment rate and the labor force participation rate are basically two different ways of seeing the same thing unemployment rate tells out of total working population how many are not working how many are unemployed and labor force participation rate tells out of the working population how many are working okay so the ones who will not be working will obviously be unemployed so ye unemployment ya employment dekhne ke do alag alag tarike hain there are two different ways of seeing how many people are employed or how many are unemployed now this rate has dropped it okay if this rate has dropped it shows that less of the labor is participating in the work it dropped in the month of may for both rural india as well as urban india now what does a decline indicate a decline indicates that individuals are withdrawing from the labor market and they are not looking for the jobs and it can be a worrisome thing for your economy if people will not work they will not earn they will not spend obviously production output and the econ entire economy will suffer what happens during the time of recession this rate even falls further like we are facing the situation now when there is a situation like recession or the economy is not doing well it will lead to lower jobs in the country when there, there are no jobs or there are less jobs people will not be encouraged to focus on employment unhe pata hai ki unhe job milegi nahi kyunki jobs hai hi nahi and that will lead to lower participation rate lower participation rate is a worrisome thing for the economy so we need to make sure that we come up with some solutions to reduce the unemployment now how has second wave impacted the jobs has it impacted yes the jobs have been impacted the low business sentiment businesses are not doing very well there are economic there are there is a curtailment in the economic activities jitni economic activities waise hoti thi utni nahi ho pa rahi covid ki wajah se then there is a fear for contracting the virus especially if we talk with respect to service sector people don't want to go out in a way of service thinking that they will contract the virus and moreover the lockdowns have been imposed which is curtailing them from going out so the low business sentiments the curtailment of the economic activities the fear of catching covid because of all this people are migrating from their work areas to their home countries or their home uh, cities or towns or villages especially people are migrating from the urban india to rural india jo bhi aapka labor hota tha jo aapke gaon type ke area se aake state cities mein work karte the unko ab covid ke dar se wo unko jobs unki they are not able to work they are losing out their jobs and they are migrating back to their village area to their rural areas and if they are going back there they are not able to find the employment there so because of all this our labor participation rates have dropped our unemployment rates have risen so what can be the measures which can be adopted we need to take some short term medium term steps in order to resume the economic activities in a graded manner like the lockdowns were imposed and gradually we are opening up the things to in resume with the economic activities jaise jaise economic activities resume hogi situation improve hogi obviously employment badhegi then we are we need to aim at the universal vaccination at the earliest vaccination is our only hope that if we will be vaccinated we will be protected against the virus and then the market the situations will improve and uh, we by being vaccinated the fear that we will catch the virus will reduce we will get more confidence we will start going out and then we can increase our demand the availability of labor will have a positive impact because of this improved business confidence will lead to more job opportunities agar sab kuch sahi hone lagega job opportunities aayengi to log work karna shuru honge unemployment kam hogi thereby setting the cycle of demand and supply in motion so this was about the rate we have already answered this question answer was option c
this was all for today's session i hope the session was useful for you all with this i would like to end up the session thank you so much